I want to share three. I've shared this in a previous episode. I don't know if you've heard it or not, but there's kind of these three ways in which men and women relate that sort of, to me, sort of uh, are prophetic or point to the fact that men ought to be the head and that women wish them to be. All right. And those three things would be the embrace. So like I hold my wife. I, I don't want to be held by my wife unless I've experienced some sort of trauma. Generally speaking, if I imagine myself with my wife, I'm giving the embrace. Hmm. She's receiving it. And I think if you were to say to her, you know, when you think of me, I don't think she would imagine embracing me. It's being embraced. Now, that doesn't a hard and fast thing, but I think it is something hmm. that most people would relate to. You can tell me if you disagree in a second. Uh, the second thing is um, the proposal, right? Like, it, it's not right that a woman should propose to to her her fiance or soon to be fiance or boyfriend. I, as the head, want to initiate that strength. I want to offer that strength, and I think most women, unless they're drunk, would say, "Well, yeah, like I'd like to be proposed to." They might still say that even if they're drunk. Okay, even if they're drunk, but there's <laughs> but in that relationship there is a receptivity, right? The woman mm -hmm. is receiving the embrace, the woman's receiving the proposal, and there's a desire for that. Mm -hmm. And in both the in, bo and then finally, it's the sexual act, right? That a man has mm -hmm. to literally rise to the occasion, and and to lead his bride into a state of receptivity, and mm -hmm. she wishes to receive that strength. Okay, mm -hmm. in those three instances, looking at it. In, from the best possible light, right? There's no sort of aggression sure. or rape or, or manipulation. Right. There's a desire to receive the strength that's well intended from the man who wants to love her well. Mm -hmm. But I think what happens is when, and again, I want to give you a chance to respond to that, but I think what happens is if you've been hurt by men, mm -hmm. then I think you understandably begin to look skeptically at any of these things because of your past mm -hmm. experiences. But so I, I would say that I would say that the, those three things like point to this thing in the man is the initiator, the woman is the receiver, and I think we see that in headship and and submissiveness, right? Well, I'll, I'll mm -hmm. stop there. What do you think about that? No, that's that's really interesting. Um, yeah, I guess I I think those are all. What what worries you about it? Because to me, mm. that seems quite obvious, and and maybe I shouldn't be so. Uh, confident in what I just shared. I guess I, th I think that, and you you did include the possibility for this in, in your answer. Like even when you said, well, unless he's experienced trauma or something, then he does want to be held. And I'm like, yeah, well, men do experience trauma, you know, and that if there are times when, you know, uh, a husband is just having a breakdown, you know, and his wife like yeah, envelops him that. in her arms, yeah, like yeah. that's that's beautiful and that's good, right? So, Absolutely. Um, so I, I guess I guess I think that sometimes I don't know, sometimes the discussions about headship that I hear in Christian circles don't take the reality of sin and, and woundedness seriously enough sometimes. Like even even, you know, the argument you hear that like, well, you know, women shouldn't have you know, women shouldn't have these legal rights because the man is the head of the household should just have them for the household. And I like that's okay, but like, what if he is an alcoholic abuser who's terrible? You know, like, should a woman never in that extreme situation have any kind of legal recourse to protect herself or her children, right? So I think, yeah. but then again, then there's the then there's the other extreme, which is maybe the kind of bad feminist extreme, which would be every relationship between men and women is like that. And men, you know, a man is always an abuser and a woman, you know, so I think, I think you need, you need one that doesn't just idolize or idealize the relationship where women m might not need in fact protection sometimes from men but then you also don't want to go to the other extreme where it's it vilifies men right so um i think that what you described as like i see what you described as as like more of that kind of redemptive order between men and women right where the kind of male initiation and generosity and self-gift is is an action of grace and love and is is freely received by the woman and mm -hmm. she also in her she also then gives herself back mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. i think that's very beautiful i also think that it can become distorted through sin you know i do think that i think i think that i think that satan really hates women amen i think he hates women i think he hates mary i think he hates the life giving capacities that women have and I think he's always, and he, and he hates the love that, that men and women can have with one another. And so he's always trying to get in there and distort 
certain twist. Um, and so I think we also need to be a little bit just aware, not be too confident in our abilities to, um, to resist that sin that can come in, you know, but to be more kind of humble and vigilant about it and, and always aware that I can only really, I don't know, men can, can love women well or can best love women well when they are like plugged into the sacraments, you know, and when they're, when they're letting God love their mm-hmm. wife through them rather than, you know, kind of seeing themselves in the place of God, I guess. Amen. Um, yeah. No, I love how you put that because I, in, in any Christian, if you were to say to them, do you think sin exists? Yes. Okay. Do you think sin distorts human relationships or can distort them? Yes. Do you think that sin can distort the way a man relates to his wife? Well, it's like there's this mm-hmm. reluctance to, to go there. And I think that is the pushback we might be seeing against this very loud feminism where men just felt like, God, I just got to shut up, yeah. you know, because if I don't shut up, I get like yelled at or slapped or you hear men say awful things like happy wife, happy life. I hate that yeah. saying. That makes women sound, seem like petulant little girls who you have to placate or else they're going to become nagging. Yeah. Now, you could also think of that in a more playful sense. I understand that. Happy wife, happy life. Still, I don't but, know. Yeah, I, know but I think this reaction we're seeing um, from men is in response to being feeling like we've been shut up for so long and that we mm-hmm. really cannot speak against that. And I think, we, I think you're right. Like We just have to be careful that we're looking at this from a holistic point of view. I don't think there's anything that would stop a woman or a man from saying, look at the ways sin distorts a way a wife should submit to her husband. And let's address that. And even in, mm-hmm. address that maybe in isolation so that it gets addressed. Mm-hmm. And then let's look at the way in which, you know, sin distorts the way husbands relate to their wives. And let's address that even in isolation. Mm-hmm. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment below letting us know what you thought about the video.